So I'm going to talk about the same thing as uh, you just heard, only, only in a different uh, manner, in a different way. It's really fun to see how differently uh, they approach I3 in the UK compared to us. Uh, we talked about it a little bit and, uh, in the break. Um, I've got some different explanations uh, for that, but I hope you guys will uh, enjoy the presentation. Um, throughout the presentation, sometimes I will just ask you guys a little bit of advice towards me and your theories why something is happening. Um, compared to the presentation we just had, I will focus a little bit more on a STEM size project, so not the whole city mainly, but more on like a smaller scale. Plus two clicks. <laughs> Keyboard is <laughs> easier to understand. So who am I? That's me when I shaved my beard and had a fresh haircut a few years back. Um, I'm part of Adiverde in the Netherlands and Adiverde Netherlands is part of Adiverde International that's the main, uh, the main office based in France. Um, and here you see our logo of our little company. Uh, it says tree services, basically. So we have just only focused on trees, and we have three uh, main teams. Um, tree care. So, as you guys know, it has European tree workers mainly. Uh, those kind of associated work. Um, team disease and pest management. And team tree consultancy and part of the last team and was for part of team tree diseases and management. Um, and largely because of I3, I focused more on tree consultancy, so I switched uh, teams. I was also part of the um, I3 the Netherlands, uh, so the platform where having four current tree consultancies uh, inside the platform, uh, which is more about like thinking group, how to approach I3 and how to um, get the whole country working with I3, which is quite a difficult task. There you see um, a part of our team um, underneath a big oak, and that's not in the Netherlands because we don't have that kind of big trees anymore. Um, this is in England because we need to look for beautiful trees in another country. <laughs> it's not entirely true, of course, but real veteran trees, we only have a few in the Netherlands. Um, so we went on a trip with uh, not the whole company, but most of them. Um, if there are any questions throughout the presentation, just ask them. Um, that's my preferred way of doing this kind of presentation. Um, I started working with, uh, with Ivory in 2019, personally, um, and I've been working most of it, at least uh, two, three uh, days a week. Uh, with general uh, tree consultants. I'm going to talk about the history of the Dutch IT program, just so we have a reference of where we came from and what we. Um, Accomplished and didn't accomplish. Current trends concerning tree eco benefits, uh, not just um, with I3, but just what's going on in the Netherlands now, and how are we trying to fit I3 in that, in those uh, concerns and goals. After which we go to the implementations. Uh, how are we using I3, and why are we using I3, and what are complications with it? That's something I'm gonna. Ask some feedback on from you guys. Um, this morning I saw you have a lot of knowledge about uh, tree eco benefits and what do you need for uh, from your data to accurately calculate um, the benefits. And because I'm looking at a small sample size, uh, that becomes a real concern. And last, the pros and cons, just a little walk around and get back to why do we use it and why don't 
should not use it, or maybe. <laughs> um, what are some dangers of using it? Eco benefits and I3. Um, and that's going to be my presentation. I think everyone knows what eco benefits are, so I'm going to go in detail with it. Uh, this is in Dutch, so if you want to learn Dutch, uh, and you can read what's on the screen. Um, focus up, I guess. Uh, CO2, everyone knows it. We already talked about it. Um, it's a big part of the ecosystem and um, eco benefits as well, mainly because we just like to talk about it, not because it's really that important on the first matter of eco system benefits. Uh, it's just a common goal to reduce CO2, so we like to talk about it. Um, uh, in the left uh, top corner, absorption of sound, already talked about it, is something we tried to figure out with i3 and see if we could do anything with it. Um, so I was really happy to hear you guys also, and I think so much so I talked about <laughs> sound absorption, I think you were talking about it. Uh, we decided that I2 wasn't fit to use it in the Netherlands because um, um, it really depends on the location and especially uh, looking at individual trees, um, the sound absorption is quite low when you're looking on small scale. Um, for example, you have a row, you have a house, tree in the middle, and it's uh, from Dutch uh, standards at least uh, four and a half meters high. Uh, it doesn't really reduce anything for the house on the opposite side. So on a small scale, it doesn't didn't really work out, and there was still a lot of data and work needed for us to incorporate it. Right, uh, top corner, um, water storage. Well, everyone knows about it. Um, Trees help with it, but also the growing place is really important, of course, uh, water storage. And you can help trees with a smart growing space, but also kill the tree with it, with a not so smart growing space. Cooling, um, pollination, and removal of um, pollution. Those are the main topics we were looking at at the beginning, um, and still looking at. For now, mostly CO2, um, pollination, so population, so um, carbon monoxide, um, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, ozone, and uh, particle matter. And I think Ben already covered that. Um, and most of the ecosystem and benefits is in the ground, or most of it, a lot. So that's also an important thing to mention um, because, I, in my opinion, all the ecosystem benefits are regulated by the ground. Not because the tree doesn't do anything, but the tree doesn't do anything if the growing space isn't right for the tree. So, in my opinion, it all starts in the growing area. And a whole lot of text. <laughs> it's just an overview of what we did and a little bit of the structure um, we used. In 2008 was the first time we were we got any knowledge and any mention of i3 in the Netherlands. It was from a colleague in America. Uh, went on a trip there for all the stuff, heard about i3 and I was like, oh that's interesting, we need to do something with it. it took us about eight years for <laughs> to really start something up. Uh, we were play testing with it, what can we do with it? And we soon discovered it's really expensive to get into the Dutch market and to make it um, applicable in the Netherlands. So in 2017, around 2017, we started part phase one and basically covered the different teams we just um, I just showed you. Um, and looking at what can we do with it and what can we not do with it and it's more of a theoretical question at that point less of a practical question. Um, with that we um, 
went to pilot phase two, where we went into more depth of different teams, including uh, urban heating island or urban heat island effect, health, biodiversity, and uh, of course pollution and all the stuff we already heard about that by then. Um, and we launched our tree eco, so we main focus on, uh, on eco, uh, so we're a different packages, um, and eco is the flagship as they say, um, and we also use canopy for a bit, but personally I don't use it that much because I think um, other technologies are a little bit better at measuring different land uses. Um, and we launched in 2019 uh, based on Dutch uh, numbers and with that I mean Dutch euros um, and Dutch goals so CO2 is the price of CO2 is based on different goals and what we need to base those on the Dutch um, program so we did that and we um, put in all the pollution and water data from the Netherlands that were available and applicable to our tree. Um, and we carried out some different analyses. Yeah, starting in um, Amsterdam, um, Dordrecht, Huizen, and a few other cities uh, that just um, helped us with funding it and actually prying out some stuff. After that, from 2019 to uh, basically until now, now we're building experience and slowly transforming the tree management, and that's in line with everything you heard basically this morning. Is that it's a long, slow process from starting to uh, look at trees in a different way. So we don't want to view a, a tree as a, a cost. We want to see the benefits of it, but also we want to know. Um, how much the tree is contrib contributing to our society and focus on those points. And at the moment, and I, I'm really enthusiastic about it, uh, we have a tree 2.0 in the Netherlands um, involving the Technical University of Delft, TU Delft, um, and four more five or six tree consultancies, uh, including four of the archery platform on the Netherlands, and a lot of uh, municipalities that are taking part in it, which is great. And it's um, a funded project um, by the Technical University of Delft. It's just subsidized and stuff like that. And we are trying to get information on growth rates of trees. And we're doing that by, li uh, by LiDAR. So, well, everyone knows the technology here by now. <laughs> so, uh, that's really interesting. And we're looking at, we have announced we have the first LiDAR data of uh, still um, measured in the same detail as today from 2012, if I say correctly. And we have some series of data for that, so we can use that to analyze the growth rate in the Netherlands and backtest that if the uh, growth rate in ITRI is on the same level or similar, which is really interesting and I really hope it's somewhat similar and if not, we need to, um, we will try to get the local growing rates inside the program. So, uh, like I said before, ITRI is open source software program and if you have data and it's uh, also open source and um, public they can include it inside the program so it's and they can use local growing rates um, for the area you're studying. Also urban heat island effect on small scale uh, measurements of um, evaporation and differences between um, irradiation and radiation and everything like that. Uh, they're measuring yeah, a little bit of a problem with the calibration of the, of the instruments. Um, and they have, I think 
around 75 different tree species where they're measuring the different rates of evaporation and contribution to um, cooling effects on a small scale. Um, and we all use that information to backtest what is margin and what needs to be more uh, detailed about the elements and what needs to be improved. And we mainly do it in this structure. So the municipalities are on one part, they're a big part of the funding. Uh, they want to know what the tree is doing and why they're doing it and how they can use the data to improve the tree management. These are all old names, well, not all. Uh, you see BTL is the old name of uh, Heidi Verde. Um, but just to get um, a visual of it, the project group is the three consultancies combined with the uh, municipalities to um, those who will facilitate the trees and give um, yes, small basically. So we want to look at this and we try to do that. Um, together we all have an advisory group which basically just means we once once in a while we get together and just talk about what we're doing and why we're doing it. And the steering group is more at a high level including Amsterdam uh, as the biggest um, in the Netherlands or at least in number of people. <laughs> um, and try to steer us in a direction that is um, also um, in line with the uh, questions on the market. So we don't just do things because we find them really interesting, but it also needs to have a purpose. So enough about the history, <laughs> how we did it. Uh, current trends is uh, are, I think, mainly uh, in line with what is in Europe. Uh, national and local climate goals. Um, in the Netherlands, we have a lot of problems with water. Um, so we're also focusing a lot on water management um, and the use of trees in water management. Focus on quality of green is a big talking point in the Netherlands right now. Um, I don't know if any one of you knows Cecile Koenijnendijk uh, with his 330-300 rule. Um, that's really popular in the Netherlands right now. Um, and it's also focused on quality of green and um, we try to um, bring high tree on the market and focus on the quality um, and not just the numbers. But I will go into that a little bit more. Effect of, uh, of urban infrastructure on trees and vice versa is basically the same as we talked about this morning. Um, a lot of uh, cables and sewers and everything in underground infrastructure uh, needs of new roads new infrastructure, uh, public transport, everything is um, affecting the trees and the trees are also affecting the So there are a lot of questions from uh, politics asking about why are we planting trees here, they're only, like, uh, they're only in the way of our street or destroying everything or just destroying buildings and stuff like that. And then you get the battle for space, uh, which is green versus grey. Uh, data driven management and public concerns. In the Netherlands, we have uh, a group called the, uh, literally translated, um, the Tree Mites, which basically uh, makes everything really hard to uh, really. Um, put it on the market and to really uh, make sure that whatever you, you want to do uh, happens because they all want every tree to stay where they are. And that's good in a sense, but sometimes it gets in the way of um, reconstructing the urban forest. Sometimes it's better for a tree to be felled and replaced than um, just keep the tree the side where it is. That can be because of risks, can be because of just no function of the tree at all, um, you name it. 
So, implementation in use cases of iTree. Uh, the main line I say every presentation is that iTree is never definable with a tool to get somewhere. Um, and that's basically um, the vision we have on iTree is that you can give everyone a lot of numbers and a lot of data and say this is the best data. So this is the best scenario, so you need to do this. Using iTree or I think every other instrument you can uh, use, you will have one focus point and you will find one tree that's the best. And so in, in a few years you are only planting poppers, for example. Because they're great in carbon sequestration. In my point of view, that's not what you want. So it's not the final goal and goal in yes, we have this much carbon sequestration, yes, we have this much leaf area, lay area index, etc. But you want um, a more nuanced advice, and that's in our opinion where the three consultancies come in and try to filter out um, the nuances. So we mainly focus on policy, management and communication. Uh, Prime service area, we talked about it a lot today, so I'm not gonna go into detail it. I agree with everything that's said. <laughs> um, quality versus quantity is still something really important in Netherlands because the policy usually says if you fell one tree, you need to replant one tree, and that's not always possible and not always the best scenario. Uh, for example, I've had a um, spring with, I think, 135 uh, birch trees um, and the whole area needed to be raised, so all those trees needed to be felled and replanted. Um, the street was like, I think, 50 meters long, so a really high <laughs> intensity of, uh, of trees there and it's not, just not possible to replant those trees. And with i3, we focused on the leaf area, for example, to show that if you um, make a decision on leaf area, you can have the same result over five, I think it was eight years in this uh, project, um, with, I think it was 50 or 55 trees. So that's more than halving the number of trees. Uh, it's also mainly because all those bridges were not really partially planted, so the ground service area per tree was really small, of course. Um, leaf service area is one of the most important um, parameters because it tells you something about the contact of the tree with the air. And if you want to compensate anything or you want to increase any parameter, um, if you increase the leaf service area, you also increase the overall benefits. Crop surface area is more focused on heat island effect. Um, cross, a high crop surface with a high leaf area index gives a great uh, impulse on the uh, heat island effect, or at least on the local level. Um, leaf surface area is a little bit more in line with carbon dioxide. Um, and the rest I think we talked mostly about I want to point out avoided costs um, like, was, like was said before you don't put it in your pocket it's a hard cost you get it year on a yearly basis I think some trees have like uh, with, with use of i tree like 50 euros of uh, yearly uh, avoided costs. Also, and that's my opinion, we stepped a bit away a little bit from avoided costs because um, one kilo of CO2 is not worth the same over 10 years as it is now. And also, there's a lot of discussion about the calculation right now. So, it depends on what if you take the Europe goals or the national goals or whatever it is. And even then, there is speculation. Um, and a kilo of CO2 in 10 years is still a kilo of CO2. <laughs> so, um, it's a little bit easier to talk about. 
Um, so responding to social objectives, right now there are uh, two main objectives in the Netherlands on a social scale and on a large scale, which is urban heat island effect, as we've seen all day, basically that is yeah, where climate change is a big topic uh, all over Europe and all over the world. Uh, and for the Netherlands, because we're a really low country, we also have a lot of trouble with the water management. Um, on the right, we see a visualization of um, the urban heat island effect in uh, neighborhoods, and the same with uh, water stress. And the more droplets, or the higher the thermometer, the more stress there is. Um, and health is also a big public concern and something we don't really touch with high tree because um, it's not possible yet and we need to do to use water literature to enrich um, the data and also it's so <laughs> complicated to, um, to show the health benefits um, as a whole and it just takes a lot of time to work out so at the moment, we said it's not. Um, it just costs too much to work out, and it doesn't give us what we need at the moment. Uh, so we're not putting any numbers on it. We're just saying it in reports as a new ones. Yeah, it also can benefit the health, but also can um, give health problems because of all things. And we do a lot of visualizations through GIS and illustrator, etc. Um, it just helps the tree management. In the Netherlands, we have a structure, and basically every municipality has their own tree data system, which has a lot of data. And basically, every tree in the it, um, is assessed almost every three years at least in the middle risk to high risk areas and five years is mostly the minimum the rural areas are a little bit different but inside the cities and mostly local small villages and stuff like that has an interval of at least of a minimum of five years and we do a physical tree assessment and we also write down the diameter tree heights tree species uh, condition and stuff like that. So we have a lot of data to put into our tree already, which gives us on that front a head start um, compared to the UK. Uh, and also we could uh, steal all their experiments uh, and uh, implement it in the Netherlands, so that also helps a lot in the question. And then we go back to LIDAR. <laughs> um, and data management. So uh, I also told, already told you uh, you have a lot of tree data already in the Netherlands and we want to enrich that um, because if you calculate tree benefits with iTree uh, you need at least the species and the diameter breast height um, and with the diameter of breast height it calculates the crown size, the tree height uh, everything needs, but you can imagine if it's just a free long tree and you just have the diameter, um, it will make sense and it will be rather accurate uh, on one tree. But as soon as you put it in a city and it differs in crown base height and uh, crown size, um, you need to adjust it. So we don't really do plot, sa uh, plot samples like. Uh, we do in the UK. Uh, we do basically everything on individual level. So we look at each tree and we calculate it in each tree. And sometimes we add, uh, extrapolate some data to get the final result. But usually we get like 95%, 95 to 95% of all trees inside the municipality through each tree. Um, which gives a lot of problems because not all trees have the same measurements and they're all measuring classes uh, which we can use LiDAR to improve that data and otherwise we need to make um, 
a whole report on how we made the calculation. So we say if the ground diameter is uh, 10 to 14 meters, we take the middle ground, so we say it's 12 meters. And well, for every single point. And really important for I3 is if you use ground data, you need to use all ground data. So if you say, I know the diameter, uh, north, south, uh, east, west, you also need to know the base height of the crown and the top height of the crown and the missing crown, which is really important, uh, especially in cities, when on one side you have a tree or a street, and on the other side you have a park, and it's not in um, an even level uh, concerning the protein. So it's a really important parameter, and your um, I tree um, makes you put in those parameters. So you, as soon as you think you check the crown measurements, you will need all the measurements. Which is really important to consider when you are <laughs> setting uh, the program and you don't take that in mind. <laughs> um, and now we go further into detail and we uh, use Lightree for local uh, decision making um, to, uh, not extremes, but to uh, very often seen scenarios in a normal, at least for the Dutch standards, normal uh, street on the top and the parking space on the bottom. Um, I mean, everyone knows. <laughs> In which area you want to live uh, yourself and um, we try on a city level to visualize where the focus point should be. So you know in this neighborhood or in this area you want to increase and that's you, you can get most of the benefits in that area. So let's just get the focus points concerning we need artifacts um, and uh, water management um, and a lot of pollution data. And this morning it was said that you have a higher pollution of polluted air in a, in a street where you have a lot of trees, basically, and there is cars underneath it. And that's something we came across, I think, one and a half, two years back in Amsterdam. We had a nice street with uh, platanas and undergoing um, traffic and everyone with asthma and stuff like that was just dying in the heat of streets. <laughs> not, not really dying but not having a great time, let's say, <laughs> let's put it like that. Um, so I'm not 100% sure you want the top level. Uh, in the top picture, these streets are not the same street, by the way, there's this um, around 50 to 75 meters away from each other. Uh, one street is being remodeled and one not. I think you guys can guess which one has been remodeled. Uh, but this is one of the main use cases in the Netherlands uh, and it's compensation to avoid um, basically this happening that the top scenario scenario goes to the bottom scenario and also to have not an optimal or not a maximum uh, steering focus so you don't want the maximum um, eco benefits but you want the optimal benefits and with that I mean that in a street where all the trees are fully grown and um, doing well at some point there's going to come a disease in there or uh, whatever it is or you need to remove the street or even air pollution um, becomes a concern uh, maybe it's better to have an optimum way you don't have 100% eco benefits possible in that street but maybe 75-80% so you also have some maybe some gaps in there uh, but you can also use your tree management to start replanting before everything goes down. So you don't, don't only get biodiversity in three species, but also biodiversity in tree edge, which is, in my opinion, um, really important to maintain uh, 
relatively flat um, brown area in your whole city and on a local level. It's not always possible, but if it's possible, I think you should, you should go for that. And also um, for the bottom picture, uh, maybe you should start investing in growing space and say this is this needs to be a sustainable growing space. Uh, and you just literally point to the map and say this one is going to be a sustainable uh, growing space for the next 60 years, for the next 80 years, or whatever it is. Maybe 200 years um, if you're really enthusiastic about it. And it doesn't really matter that some trees will have a life expectancy of 15 years, or maybe not. Uh, you can use poplars, still a street tree, but just fell them if they're 20 years, maybe. I'm not saying you should directly do <laughs> this, but just as a uh, train of thought. Um, if you want to compensate your tree benefits on, for example, carbon dioxide, you can use populus, which are really focused on growing, uh, sequestrating a lot of CO2. And after maybe 20 years, they've done their job. And the slow growing trees are taking over. And that way, I mean, if you need to start over, you, in that way you can create diversity and biodiversity over the years. Problem is, all the politics want to think in three years or four years because after that they're gone and no one cares what happens with all the great plans they had. So it's all short term vision. Um, and there is also another big problem with this, and that is the underground infrastructure, so you don't have enough growing space, you can't establish those. Um, the, the need of bed sizes, the need of growing space, um, and choosing sustainable uh, growing spaces helps you with that. And it also has one big other benefit, maybe you guys have an idea on all the benefits it could have that you use a different way of looking at trees, it's on the quality of trees and not on the quantity of trees. Um, that helps maybe with the uh, underground uh, infrastructure. I don't know if anyone has something like maybe this is a con for that or a pro. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to take a sip of that water. Mm. <coughs> One thing you see if you focus a little bit more on, on quantity or on quality or quantity is you actually create more space for uh, street materials. So you can have your bus stop there instead of a tree because you need 500 trees in that street and it's not possible. So you can just plant and plant it. If you have more quality of trees, you get the same result. And it's not always the best result you want, but the same result as the other scenario and you have more room for the street interior and also less pressure in, on, in the round um, space. So it can also help each other. So on one part where it's possible, we take from the uh, in the round space and on other places it's maybe not that bad if we um, consolidate a little bit and say Okay, it's just that we put a small tree there and the life expectancy is it's less, but it just um, balances out again. Hmm. I didn't translate this. Luckily, I'm not the only one who didn't translate anything or everything to English. Um, I can be I'm colorblind, so uh, sorry for all the flashy colors and stuff like that. It helps me a lot <laughs> in this presentation, especially with screens. Um, so basically, what you see here are four different scenarios calculated with high tree uh, based on fictive trees. Um, the blue one is a small plant size of 18 to 20. Uh, which is 7 centimeters in diameter um, with your usual just enough 
growing space uh, in Iran and everywhere. Uh, Turkey trees in total, if you want to know, it doesn't really matter for the, for the picture. Um, the green one, I think, the second row, <laughs> is uh, the bigger plant size of 45 to 50 diameters, which is around a diameter of 15 centimeters. Um, with the same under and around um, conditions. Number three in red, as it should be the smaller size trees with not enough underground space and or not enough underground space but underground space in Roman places is way more important. And the last one, I think it's orange, our national color is also a smaller plant size and with excellent growing space. So more than enough growing space. And all the same among trees, all the name, all the same tree species. I think I used four different tree species for this uh, fictive calculation. And what you see in the graph is the leaf surface area in this case with the forecasted years. And the fun thing is when you um, when in a project that is needed that you want to uh, compensate all the tree benefits in five years, you want to go for the bigger trees. Right? You see in five years that's still a high line, the green line. Um, but if you take an account that you want to have a durable um, urban forest and for the municipalities you can, in the Netherlands at least, we can um, put this kind of stuff inside a contract um, that the, what we call it, the project, um, the guy that actually does the project and builds a building and stuff like that. Contractor. Contractor. Yeah, that's right. Contractor needs to abide in those terms, so he needs to prove that it is at least possible to compensate everything within 10 years, for example, or 20 years, or 5 years, or whatever they want and is realistic. Um, and this way you see that the orange line is um, taking over the bigger planting size in about 10 years. After 10 years, it's better to invest in the growing space than to invest in a bigger plant size. Best scenario with both, of course. Um, but that's something that was really important uh, in our vision and in our view of uh, using i3 and using i3 to um, steer on the quality side. The same thing, kind of, uh, in a different way. Again, sorry for the beautiful colors. <laughs> um, this is marked in red because you can't read it. It's not entirely the same scale. Uh, the left one goes to seven, the right one goes to eight. Uh, so it's a little bit um, skewed. Uh, those are four scenarios of real life um, projects and streets in the municipality of Polunza, um, in the south of the Netherlands, but it doesn't really matter. And they had a lot of good, uh, uprooting problems there. And what do you know when you are uprooting problems? It's not good for the road. It's not good for uh, public risk, um, for tipping over and stuff like that, and uh, elderly people. And you need to fix that. Fixing that, um, there are three ways. You cut off the roots, you repave the ground, um, or you replant the trees. This is the main three um, ways you can um, take on this problem. Um, and you can also improve the growing area and um, then repave and make sure that it doesn't happen again or at least not as severe as, uh, as it is happening right now. And in this case, um, 
It's basically all the way around in the gray area, the bottom area. You could say, well, this is the effect of um, soil improvement on the street, and it's minimum in basically all scenarios. Um, and that's because the trees are already in a decent condition. So if the condition doesn't improve, the, the trees are not going to improve that much. I'm not sure if I said it. So the left one is the current situation, the right one is the improved situation. I think I forgot to mention. It's <laughs> five minutes. Oh, okay. Um, so sometimes the PSA is start over. Uh, because it's just better. Real short, the most heavy <laughs> sheet. Uh, this is the water intercepted uh, per tree and combined with uh, rain um, in the municipality of Swall. Um, and in this case, we use geographic data on weather. Uh, and water tables and we'll look at the effect of trees inside those areas and the red houses are all flooded in heavy rain moments which is a big problem of course um, and we want to analyze what the trees contribute with this problem and then you look at the intercepted because that slows down the rain and the water flow um, but you need in this is an important part, but you need to uh, improve the transport of water out of the area and the wrong spaces. Helping with that, so bigger trees will help for 15 minutes. If it continues to rain in that heavy manner, you need water measurements. So the number of times flooding will go down, but the, um, but it won't solve the problem in its entirety. This is again the same kind of thing with scenarios we do a lot. Uh, in improved growing areas, um, the same growing areas. So the green one has been improved. This is the same area over 10 years as the current area, improved area, and starting all over again. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's clear, it's cost efficient to just improve the area. With respect to Rodata, same thing with improving problems. In this case, um, the tree manager just wanted us to tell how much tree contribute on three equal benefits. So we can say to the um, to all the people living around, we want to save those trees and we want to keep them here in a really big uh, oaks. And this is why we're gonna make your life a little bit more difficult because we're gonna make the road a little bit smaller for many new width to solve the issue with uprooting and on the sidewalk they're gonna um, take away all the stone and <laughs> place um, a sand pad there yeah. so they're gonna have to move in their house all the time um, and also this is also common that uh, and this is what we're doing right now uh, and looking at a lot more and it's just data, raw data of the high tree that we're going to put into the uh, data system of the municipalities. So this contains crown area, um, leaf area index, um, leaf area surface, carbon storage, carbon dioxide uh, sequestration and in this case we just put all the pollution removal together and not on its own, just um, six of the oxide because uh, nitrogen dioxide because nitrogen is another big topic in the Netherlands uh, and stuff like that. And one really important thing that I just want to mention is uh, you need to know how you calculate everything because they want to use this over two years maybe to reevaluate whatever they did. And this is a way of saying a tree in this area, in this condition, in this ground is um, calculated in this way. So I use an algorithm basically to uh, enrich the data with ground sizes for the missing points. So you need to write that down and 
make it repeatable. It was the fun part. Communication, free text, talked about it. <laughs> um, Reputation in use cases of I3, same thing. Uh, the important thing is, I really lost this diagram, it's hard to read. Every one line is different dbh, and the bigger the line, uh, the further you go that way, the better the tree condition is going to be. And we see that it doesn't really matter uh, what ground size, of what tree size it's going to get. Uh, get. So if, if it's a first class tree, or a second, or a third, it's all um, dependent on the, um, on the tree species, how fast the crown area will grow. Um, important to mention is this all the same tree, so it looks like a timeline, it's not. It's um, the condition class of high tree. So 32 is one of the condition classes, uh, 42, 52, 62. So that's the improvement or the, uh, the sum of leaf area per improved condition class. So you see that the factor on the start is way higher. So you get a factor of around 2.5, I think, is the median. And in the end, you get 1.3. And around 42, you have like 1.8 already. So it goes down really fast, but it's still uh, exponential because a factor of 1.3 over 1,000 square meters is still more of an increase than by a factor of two by 200 meters, square meters. Um, which is basically written down in this, and this is more of a discussion part, but I can uh, skip that. This is my last uh, frame to end it with. Uh, so some pros and cons, I think it's really fun to put it in this way, because I say it's a, it's a project that's data intensive, and it's a content data, and that's a um, it's a pro for us because we can sell it. Uh, it's a pro because it's not really easy to use. Um, same for um, risk of uh, misinterpreting for uh, the data for some reasons, uh, and you get eventually you can get greenwashing by that. So you just use your data and know <laughs> full well that you're not using it and interpreting it in a correct way and uh, just for selfish reasons basically and that's something we see a lot uh, and we're asked about sometimes just yeah can we buy this forest so we can um, produce more CO2 uh, the forest is already there it doesn't, you're buying nothing at least now it's like in forest tree care and it's health improving and, and still being here. If you're going to buy it, it's going to probably <laughs> be gone in 10 years. Uh, but you have your carbon credits, if you want to say it in that, uh, that way. So it's really important you use the same method and you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. And it's repeatable. And that's the most important part. It needs to also be repeatable. If I do it, then needs to be able to do it. Uh, and all the um, this is the last, uh, the last, the last, in case I didn't think so, the last any time left. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that was the presentation in a little bit longer than uh, I expected, um, but I hope everything was clear. You got a nice feel of what we're doing in the Netherlands, and mostly the um, process that's going on, and that we're not um, just putting it in IT, but also backtesting if everything makes sense and if it's repeatable and reproducible. Like I said before, it's not always important that you're 100% accurate, uh, but if you do it in the same way, in the same manner, over in a time series. Um, you can see if it's improving or not, and maybe that's the most important part that you're improving your ecosystem benefits, not just uh, saying it's this much hard, this much nitrogen, whatever. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you.